In this video, we're going to be talking about seven tips and tricks as a guide for getting started in RC crawling. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Troy. This is Roadside RC. You'll tend to find me crawling and bashing and drifting and racing, plus doing product review videos and how to's. One of the things I'm really passionate about is helping people get started in their RC journey. And this video today is all about these awesome RC crawlers which is a great aspect of the hobby. And what does it take seven things for you to look at and consider as you get started with RC crawlers? The first thing for you to consider as you're looking at it is the size of the vehicle that you want. This draws a lot of implications and makes a lot of other decisions for you based on your choice. We have stuff like the TRX 4M, which is the 18th scale small crawler that you see here. Both of these are actually tent scale crawlers from Element RC and from Traxxas. Tent scale tends to be the most common, most popular form size of RC crawler that you will see. There's even bigger crawlers, six scale SCX6 from Axial, that is a whole different, I mean, almost double the size of these trucks that are out there and available for you. You tend to see people use these smaller scale crawlers indoors and on very specific indoor crawling type courses or in their houses on snowy wintry days. These do not tend to get a lot of exposure outside on trails and in the real world because it's just too big for them. The 10 scale crawler is the most popular size in the RC crawling world. This is where you will see a lot of the competitions are centered around the most vehicle choices, the most aftermarket parts choices and everything are all centered around this 10th scale design. And this is where I recommend most people should start their crawler journey. And then as I mentioned, the six scale crawler from Axial, the SCX6, this is really kind of a niche product at this moment. It's really much better for folks who aren't really worried about crawling with other people want to tackle the biggest, craziest terrain possible and want to have a very large vehicle to do it with. That is a very small percentage of the overall crawler group as it sits right now. Once you've selected the size, and we're going to assume that you're going to go with 10 scale for a lot of what we're going to talk about in the video, once you've assumed that size that you want to go with, the next choice you have to look at is kit versus uh, ready to run. So a ready to run is a fully ready to run vehicle. You take it out of the box. Maybe you have to provide a battery and a charger, but otherwise the vehicle is completely assembled, painted, everything ready to go. And you could be up and driving it in the same day. A kit on the other hand is one that you need to build. So why would someone choose a ready to run versus a kit? If you're getting started in RC crawling, I actually do recommend that you start with the ready to runs. They are very good quality anymore these days. Yes, you will eventually end up replacing some of the electronics, but you're gonna be doing a host of upgrades and changes to these vehicles anyway over time. It's kind of part of the fun of it. On the other hand, once you do have more experience, something like a kit, which is how this TRX4 Sport actually started, was as a kit version, can be quite entertaining. This can be quite fun because you get to then choose all the components, your own paint jobs, everything on it straight from the beginning. So you're actually upgrading it and making a better vehicle all from the beginning instead of buying some components that maybe you wouldn't have wanted otherwise. Since I assume most folks are going to be starting tent scale and ready to run, here are some of the vehicles that are my top picks for ready to runs right now. You will see that all of these recommendations for ready to runs are basically in the three to $400 range. Again, you're gonna to want to add a battery and a charger to that. The first of our recommendations is the Red Cat Gen 8. This is a very good crawl quality crawler with portal axles and a lot of great features out of the box for just over $300. I have personally found it to be very capable and pretty durable as we use it. And then there has been enough of an aftermarket out there that we could really tweak and refine this truck as much as we wanted. Really enjoyed it. And I think it's a great starter platform at a very reasonable price. 
The only vehicle on my list that actually is a lower price than that Redcat Gen 8 is the brand new Element Enduro SE. This is just released and I have not personally been able to get my hands on it yet, but I do have experience with its bigger brother or its older brother, the Ecto, and it shares a lot of the parts and a lot of the architecture and everything that I've seen so far says that this is going to be a very good crawler at $299. It's the only one that comes in under the $300 mark. Um, there are some drawbacks to this Element Enduro SE. It does have bushings instead of bearings. It does have a slightly bigger body on it, but it does look very good. This is definitely a truck that you could get into, has a, some clear upgrade paths to it, and performs really well. Its older brother here is the Element Ecto. And I do bring this up even though it is at the top of the price range for what I'm talking about for folks getting ready. This truck right now is $399. It's $100 more than the Enduro SE. However, what I will say is it has been the best, single best, ready to run crawler that I have ever had. Um, the electronic components in it are rock solid out of the, the gate. The tires, although I have replaced and upgraded them, the stock tires are actually really good. And the overall chassis layout, uh, weight layout, everything like that has been very, very good for me. So one of the most capable vehicles straight out of the box. It is more expensive, but it may be a little bit cheaper once you consider the upgrades that other vehicles are going to get thrown at them. The last suggestion that I'm going to make for an out-of-the-box ready to run is actually the TRX4 Sport. Again, this started as the kit, but you can also get it in ready to run form. It has some of the best tires a ready to run has coming with it. It is a very capable and probably one of the most durable ready to run crawlers on the market at just at $369 it is still right in the middle window of all those prices that we've talked about uh, parts support is galore it is, has all the parts all the upgrades everything that you could possibly want for it it is out there for that TRX4 Sport and there's guides and everything for it it is a very solid choice as a ready to run crawler now you'll notice that all the vehicles I have suggested are all the scale truck looking vehicles. There are some more rock racer style vehicles out there such as the Axial Wraith, Axial Bomber, and the Axial Capra. However, I am not recommending those. Those can be fun. The Wraith and Bomber have been really hard to come by here recently. Uh, and the Capra is currently going through a transition. Plus its price point is much higher. It is in the $500 price range. It is much higher than what these other vehicles are that I have suggested. Performance is good, but I don't know if it really necessarily justifies that price point as for someone getting into crawling. If that $299 price tag for the Element Enduro SE plus battery and charger is still too much for you getting into RC crawling, there are cheaper options. I will say though, I did not recommend them for a reason. As you go cheaper from that vehicle, you do tend to lose a noticeable amount of performance. I do, I've messed with some of these vehicles, such as this Danchi Ridge Rock. It is four wheel drive. It is pretty capable out of the box, but it is just not, it still leaves a lot on the table for about that $100 that you're giving up. Same thing with uh, Red Cat actually offers the Gen 7, which is a cheaper alternative to the Gen 8. The problem is, is the performance gap between the Gen 7 and the Gen 8 is just so large that it's really worth saving up the extra money and and buying the Gen 8 or one of these other better vehicles. The pro for you is that if you do buy these better vehicles, they will, and you turns out you don't like RC crawling, they'll actually have better resale value. So I don't really recommend as a beginner picking up one of those cheaper vehicles. I really would suggest one of the ones like we've talked about here. Item number four is talking about what kind of kit you may want to build. If you already have other RC experience, if you have some folks around you to help you pick out the appropriate components and to get them set up appropriately in the vehicle, then you can go with a kit. Three of those that I would recommend if you are going to get it. One is the Vanquish Phoenix kit, which comes in around $399. So it is expensive. It is a high quality kit. It does require 
require a lot of different electronic components to get it fully up and running, but it is definitely a top of the line, very nice kit for you to build. The second, like I mentioned, is that I built this TRX4 Sport Kit. And when I say I built it, I'm actually I'm actually not being truthful a little bit here. Actually, my like nine-year-old son at the time built this truck. So that gives you an idea of how good the instructions were from Traxxas on this crawler as a kit is that my nine-year-old built it like without any kind of issues. And then lastly, actually one of the cheapest kits that I would suggest the element same people that make this ecto have an enduro builders kit which is about 250 dollars it comes with a lot of really nice components on it you provide all the electronics the body and the tires and wheels and you have a really good competent crawler topic number five here now is if you are really stuck on these smaller scale crawlers what are your choices there it really comes down to two this is the TRX4M from Traxxas. It comes in at about $150 price point. There is also an SCX24 from Axial that is about $20, $25 cheaper. Honestly, I really do recommend the Traxxas TRX4M over the SCX24. SCX24 is even smaller and less capable out of the box. The TRX4M is definitely worth that extra $20, $25. Item number six as you prepare to get into RC crawling is you need to be ready for upgrades. We've talked about the purchase price to get into these vehicles. It doesn't end there as it turns out. One of the best parts about RC crawlers is actually the customization that you can do with them. So as an example, if I take this Element Ecto, which as I told you, one of the best performing capable crawlers out of the box, haven't really done anything to the body, that's fine but it has different tires and wheels. It has a different servo in it. We've put a different motor and ESC in it. You tend to modify the suspension. You tend to add weight up front. We've modified the transmission to where we get more wheel speed in the front than the rear. That's called overdrive. We've done all of these things to it. So you will quickly realize that just the purchase price of the vehicle alone is just the start you will want to rather soon upgrade things. You will typically kind of go in the order of tires and servo first. Those are very, very important. Then work on making sure that you have weight in the front and as lightweight in the rear as possible. You do not want a tall crawler. Tall crawlers tend to fall over more. So you will then look at what it takes to make sure that the vehicle is at an appropriate height where it can clear things, but as low as otherwise possible. And then finally, you will look at the power plant itself and see what kind of upgrades to the power system you may want to do. Item number seven, the very last thing, is that RC crawling is a very social aspect of the RC hobby. It is fun to go out and crawl by yourself. It is so much more fun to go out and crawl as a group. So whether like I have my kids that I can go out with, friends, I highly suggest go to your local hobby store, ask them what kind of groups are around, ask them if there's any kind of courses or established places for crawlers to be used at, go to Facebook, your social medias, your Instagrams, wherever you like to hang out and search for folks in your local area. That is how I found a lot of my folks. And then lastly, Google Maps and things like that, you may be able to find RC crawler courses near you. As an example, I'm very fortunate Fortunate within an hour, I have two to three very established great places that we can go and crawl and have a big community together with it. That is really, honestly, what really takes RC crawling to the next level is being able to do that. So as you start to get into this RC crawler hobby and you're doing that kind of research, poke around and see who's around and what's around. That'll also help you choose, as we talked about very early on, like what size of vehicle to use. As an example here in Middle Tennessee, there's not a lot of places uh, currently established for these smaller crawlers, but we have a lot and a lot of spaces set up for the tent scale crawlers. And kind of the bonus item here in this video, the number eight bonus tip that you get here is like I said, most of these ready to runs don't come 
come with a battery and a charger. Now, wherever you are purchasing the vehicle from, those folks will probably be very happy to help you pick out a battery and a charger to go along with the vehicle. I also have a v video right over here that I will leave you with that is all about how to select a LiPo for your vehicle and some links to some popular chargers that I like to use and I have tested and personally vetted out will be in that video. So I will see you over there. Thank you and goodbye.